Hello friends, welcome to the course on Learn Basics of EDAPS. So this is a complete beginner course and this course is intended for those people who are just new to EDAPS. Okay? This course will teach you the basics of EDAPS and once you go through this course, you will get some kind of familiarity with this software. Okay? This course is not everything that you need for structural designing. But once you go through this course, it will be a lot more easier to get along with the advanced courses. This course is absolutely free and once you go through this course, please leave a review. I hope you learned something from this course and it will be helpful to understand other courses very easily. Hello friends, in this video we will talk about the introduction of EDAPS 2016. Once you open your software, you will get this start page. Over here you got latest news or you can uh, get resources where you can get uh, users guide or introductory tutorial over here you can see that uh, there is a menu bar and below menu bar uh, there is a toolbar and there is also a vertical toolbar over here as well okay so uh, the menu bar different menus are available uh, for example file menu if you click so uh, over here you can uh, start a new model or open uh, any existing model or close save and save as okay so you can do a lot of these many things uh, with this menu then you got edit menu that will help you to edit your model so view menu helps to adjust the different kind of views of your model so define menu helps to define uh, materials sections and other things that are required for modeling and draw menu helps you to draw your model so whatever you want select menu helps you to select different parts of your model assign menu helps you to assign uh, loads or you know joints or anything that you want to assign to your model okay so analyze menu helps to helps for the analysis so analysis basically means finding your uh, shear force axial force you know displacement and other reaction values so display menu helps you to see your uh, forces you know what forces are applied on your model or you know deform shape your model or bending movement shear force diagram if you are doing the dynamic analysis it will help you to see a uh, response spectrum curves and it also helps you to see uh, different values in tables okay so design menu helps you to design your structure so detailing is for detailing the structure and uh, these other menus are available that will help you to change uh, the appearance of this uh, software so toolbar menu over here has got different shortcut options these shortcut options you can also obtain from the menu bar okay the first thing that you have to do is click on file click on new model okay or you can click new model from here as well after that you will see a dialog box so you saved user default settings so if you have saved any settings previously then you can use this option or use settings from a model file if you got a file that has got settings you can use this option or what we do we normally choose the third option that is use built-in settings with so display units uh, us customary or metric si or uh, metric mk so we'll just click metric si and still section database right now we don't need these many things however it will give you some practice okay so still section database uh, just click on this option over here and select any code that is followed in your country for example i live in nepal and we follow indian standard codes and databases so i'll select indian over here okay so still design code i'll select is 800 2007 or you can select any other code okay so concrete design code uh, i'll select is 456 2000 so right now we won't be using these things but you know it's a good practice okay so and click on okay uh after that you get another dialog box that asks you about the grids if you see over here so add structural objects so you can see that there are different templates available okay to draw uh, many things for example if you want to uh, draw a steel deck or a staggered truss or a flat slab so you got templates right but normally uh, we start with grid only because it gives more flexibility all right which means that in etabs we draw everything with the grids uh, you'll know this thing in a while in very much depth so right now uh, just click on ok over here
so we got three windows okay so first one is the explorer and second one is the plan view so it is the plan view and uh third one is the 3d view okay so model explorer gives you information about the model so you can get this information from the menu bar so normally you don't need this window so uh, i prefer to close it okay so after that you got two windows one says the plan view another says the 3d view okay these two uh views are of the same object right so whatever you draw over here it will be reflected on this window as well you are seeing the same object in different views by side by side windows okay now if you see in the 3d view over here so uh, let me just uh, rotate this okay so you can see that we got uh three axes right x axis y axis and g axis over here and over here you see x axis and the y axis okay to understand the grid system that is followed in e tabs consider a room okay all right so room that you're right now room that you're right now in okay so this is your room right uh, let us assume that uh, this corner okay so let us this corner and this axis over here represents the x axis then in that case this axis represents your y axis and this axis represents the z axis this is xg plane this is yg plane and this is over here is the xy plane so if you draw something uh, something like this and if we see from the top that we'll see on the xy plane and if we see from the side that we'll see on the xg plane all right once we understand this we'll model a simply supported beam in etabs okay so uh, let us take a simply supported beam as an example so uh, this is our simply supported beam over here and uh, so the span of this beam uh, let us take as six meters six meters and a load of uh, let us apply 20 kilonewton is applied at the center of this span so we'll model this beam on e tabs and see its uh, shear force diagram and bending movement diagram and deflection okay so we'll do this thing in our introductory tutorial if i place uh, this in support at uh, this point this origin point then uh, you can see that the beam will go like this and we'll have a roller support somewhere here okay so uh, we'll need one grid at this position so uh, another grid at where the load is applied and the third grid uh, at the roller support right so we got one two and three grids in the x direction okay or you can say on the xy plane in the x direction on the xy plane okay so this is the significance of grid so whatever you want to draw you have to draw with the grids right so uh, we want to draw a beam so we need to have a grid line along one x axis so for our uh, hinge we need to have a grid line for this load we need to have a grid line and this we need to have a grid line okay so this grid is by default and we need to edit it so for that just right click here and click on add modified grids or you can alternately go from edit and click on edit stories and grid systems so uh, this helps you to edit the story data so for example if you got a building of two three four five six stories you will edit the story from here all right so uh, we'll click modify so story data over here so here is story 4 has been selected so we don't have any stories because right now we are just planning to model a simple beam okay so we'll just delete story 4 story 3 and story 2 okay so hold shift and click on story 2 and right click and click on delete story so delete existing structure at story so after that just click ok and uh grid system so uh this over here so this is the entire grid system that we have so uh so g1 grid system has been uh, defined by default so this grid system is the g1 grid system that the software has defined so we can add a new grid system or just modify this grid system okay so we we'll click on modify so grid system and uh so you can set the name of the grid system that you want 
so a system origin so we'll keep the origin at zero meter and uh, display rectangular grid so display grid data as ordinate and display grid data as spacing so we'll click on display grid data as ordinate so it means that it will take this point as the origin and based on that origin it will take or the value of other point with reference to that origin okay x grid data so in the b we have got one grid that is at zero so uh grid id a so this grid id a over here so it has the ordinate of zero uh, because it is at the origin so we need another grid for the load right so the load is at three meters because the span is of six meters and load is at the center so we'll hit three and hit enter so our next grid is at six meters so click on so just type six and hit enter so next grid we don't need so click on delete okay so in the y grid data so we don't have anything because the grids are only along the x direction right okay so we'll just select these uh two three four grids and click on delete and we don't have any other general grids right so you can change the bubble size if you want so bubble size means size of these bubbles all right okay so reference points and reference planes we don't need right now so we'll just click on ok for now and just click ok after defining the grids we have to draw the beam okay so one thing that you need to understand is that before uh, drawing anything you have to first define what material it is and and how the section will look like so right now we are just concerned with drawing a beam and getting its bending movement diagram shear force diagram displacement and the reaction values okay for that we don't need to do anything like that and we'll do those things in the coming lectures okay all right so uh just draw it so for that you have to go to draw and click on draw beam column brace objects and draw beam column brace so you can see that this icon over here is also over here right so it means that either you can click on this option after that a window will appear or what you can do you can just or you can just click here okay so both mean the same thing you don't have to go to all the way to draw be draw beam column brace objects and click here you can just click from here all right right now so you don't need to look at any of these options all right so we'll just focus on drawing uh, you can close this window if you want so right now you don't okay so there are two ways by which you can uh, model this beam so one is so left click over here then uh, click on the mid point after that click on this point okay so once you are done with it just hit enter okay so once you are uh, once you are done drawing you can just hit escape to escape that command all right okay so uh, here you can see that we got two beams right but while we are drawing so over here you should have seen that movement release is continuous so it means that so though these two beams are different but they will behave as a continuous beam okay so if the movement release over here is pinned and if we draw the beam in that situation there will be zero movement okay so this point will not have a movement because it is pinned right so we'll just keep on continuous and and I just hit escape so after drawing the beam you have to assign the supports okay so for that uh, click on this joint over here go to assign click on joint click on restraints for giving the support and over here you got a fixed support uh, hinge support roller support and just a point okay so we'll click on a uh, hinge here and just click on apply hinge support has been applied on this beam but right now you cannot see so i'll show you why and uh just select this point again and click on roller and click on apply you cannot see any uh, support here because we are on the xy plane that is we are seeing from the top right to see the support we have to see the beam from side so for that we have to see the beam on in elevation you can see uh, the support here in the 3d view right so this is our beam and this is the in support and on the other hand we got uh, the roller support right so you can do uh, this uh, thing using the middle mouse button if you scroll it it will zoom in you scroll out it will zoom out and you can just uh, click on middle mouse button to pan 
all right so click the middle mouse button so drag wherever you want to take it okay so after doing this uh what you can do is that just select the middle joint now we have to apply the load of 20 kN. so select the joint go to assign click on joint loads click on force so the load pattern is dead and uh so the force is in global g direction okay so uh upward direction is taken as positive so we are applying the load in the negative direction so we'll take as minus 10 over here okay so 10 kilonewton so unit over here is so if you click on units then we are on metric si that is in metric si the force is on kilonewton length is in meter okay all right so minus 10 kilonewton so options over here are uh, replace existing load so if you have already applied some load and you want to replace it with a different load okay so we are not applying 10 we are applying 20 uh, you want to replace it, it with a different load then you can use this option and if you have already applied a load and you want to add another load so you can use this option and if you want to delete the existing load you can use this option okay so load pattern name right now we only have dead and click on okay okay so if you click on 3d view and you just uh, rotate this zoom out a bit pan it so now you can clearly see that you got a beam over here with supports at two ends and a load of 20 kilometer has been applied in the downward direction all right uh, okay so there is another method to apply the load so we'll delete everything that we have done so far and hit just delete uh, this is the base over here and this is the first floor so you can either draw at the first floor or you can draw at the base okay so uh, let's draw at the base right now so this is the base so so for that i just click on plan over here so we'll go to the base not at the story one so we we'll click on okay so now we are at the base so i just click on the beam over here and after that uh, click on this point left click and you don't have to click here just directly click over here all right so after that right click to escape it and hit escape to escape this command okay uh now you can see in 3d view that once you draw your beam it apps will automatically give uh hinge support at this point and hinge support at this point so hinge support at this point we are fine with that so we need roller support at this point so we'll just click this joint and go to assign click on joint click on restraints and over here uh, we'll click on roller support and click on apply and click on okay so now you can see that so roller support has been applied at uh, this point okay so you can see a 3d window here as well and uh, let us rotate this one right so you can see it okay so uh, after that uh, we have to apply the load uh, so select this beam and uh, go to assign earlier we were applying joint load so now we're applying the frame load because we're applying the load directly on the beam and click on point load so the load uh, is dead load we are applying so a uh, load type direction is forces so direction of the load is gravity that is the downward direction and it says point load so distance and load so at what distance what load you want to apply okay so uh, there are two options so relative distance from end i and absolute distance from end i so relative distance from end i means that this this entire span from this joint up to this joint will be taken as one meter uh, so we got six meters but it will be taken as one meter and based on that it will apply the load okay so absolute distance from in i means that this entire span will be taken as six meters or uh, that is its actual length okay so if we click on relative distance from in i so we are applying the load at 0 0.50 that is at midway that is at three meters okay so we'll apply the load of 20 kN. so you don't have to give minus here because the direction is gravity and other positions we have got zero load and click on apply and click on okay so now you can see that load of 20 kN has been applied in the downward direction uh, after doing this much of thing now we can find the shear force diagram bending moment diagram and other things of this beam that is known as the analysis 
and while doing the analysis uh, that is the ideal analysis if we do in that situation we don't consider the weight of that beam right if you have done analysis in your statics in your college then you must have known that you don't consider the weight of the beam okay so we have to tell we have to consider the weight of this beam as zero so for that just go to define and click on load patterns and over here so we have applied the load as dead load right so self weight multiplier will just give at zero so it means that whatever the self weight that this software will calculate it will multiply it with a zero giving the resultant value as zero okay so we'll just uh, click on modify load and click on okay so after that uh, let us do analysis and for that go to analyze and so it is best to check the model before analysis so this is not any so this is not a complex model so we'll just skip this step okay so just click on run analysis okay so uh, it says to save so i'll just save to documents and uh, i'll just create a new folder so it tabs prct practice I'll open this so it apps it apps okay let's save it now it is carrying out the analysis so after the analysis you can see the deformed shape of this beam okay so this is the exaggerated view because the beams cannot deflect up to this position okay so if you want to animate just click on start animation and it will animate okay uh, let's just stop the animation uh, let us see the shear force diagram so whatever result of analysis or anything that you want to see on etabs you have to go to display option all right okay so if you want to see the undeformed shape right now we don't want that we just want to see a force stress diagrams so uh, if you want to see the support uh, reactions that is uh, support reactions you can click on this option so i'll show you and uh, so the load case is dead all right so uh, okay so this is fc and click on okay so we have the load of 20 on downward direction so 10 10 that is fine right okay so after that click on display and click on force stress diagrams and click on frame per spandrel forces so the load case is dead so over here you can see the axial force torsion and in plane shear other things so uh, we know what these are so shear 2 2 here means that is the major shear and shear 3 3 means the minor shear okay so similarly movement 2 2 means the major movement and movement 3 3 means the minor movement okay so let us first see uh, the major shear so scaling is automatic okay so after that uh, click on ok so now you can see the shear force diagram all right and if you go to display and click on this option over click on this option and over here so you can see that this icon is also available here right so you can simply click on this option and after that uh, if you see display options and uh, so right now we got field diagram so if you click on show values at controlling stations on diagram and uncheck this and just click on ok so you can see that minus 10 uh, kilonewton shear force here and 10 kilonewton shear force here okay so you can see the shear force values as well and again uh, click over here and click on movement n33 and click on ok so a uh, movement of 30 kilonewton meter is there right so this is how you get the shear force and the movement diagram and if you just uh, left click on this beam and after that right click then you will get this table and from here you can see the load case and components so what do you want to see so major shear force or the minor shear force and the movement or axial load and the torsion okay so uh, display location so if you want to see the maximum value so right now it is showing the maximum value the maximum value of shear force is minus 10 kN uh, at 3 meter location and uh, maximum value of movement is 30 kN meter as 3 meter location that is at the center and the maximum value of the deflection is 0 0.618 mm at 3 meter location so deflection that earlier it was showing is only 0 0.618 mm okay so this end is called as the i end and this 
and over here is called as the JN. If you want to see values at a certain location, just click on scroll for values. And now what you can do, so if you want to see the shear, so you can just uh, drag this slider and at which point you want to see the value, okay? So at what point the result is being displayed is written over here. And you can see the values uh, at any point you want to see, all right? This is how you model and analyze a simply supported beam. The objective of this section is only to give you information about the grids and a basic information about how ETAS functions and give you some familiarity, familiarity with this software. Okay. And having this much of knowledge, let us move further on this course. Hello friends, having some basic knowledge of ETAPS, uh, now let us model this simple structure in ETAPS, okay. This uh, structure over here is similar to a uh, building, okay. Now, whatever steps that are followed to analyze and design this simple structure are also followed to analyze and design a, a simple residential building, alright. So this is the support, this is the base and this is the first story that is the, you can say it is the ground floor, okay. And this is the second story. All right, and uh, so height of each story is three meters. So this is three meter, and this is three meters. And span in uh, x direction is five meters. It means that so this is the x direction, right? So this over here is of five meters, and span in uh, y direction is six meters. So it means that this is six meters, which means that in x direction you want grid at origin and at 5 meter from the origin. Similarly, in y direction, you want a grid at origin and at 6 meter from the origin, okay? These are the beams, okay? So these are the beams. These are the beams over here, also on the upper floor. So these all are these beams, okay? So the size of the beam is 230 by 350 meter. So that is, so this is the section of the beam. So this is 230 and this is 350, okay? And column size is 350 by 350 meters. So if this is your column, so this is 350. So these all are the columns. Okay, so these all are the columns. So if they are of size 350 by 350 mm. So this is also 350. Okay, slab thickness. So this over here is the slab. So thickness of the slab is 125 mm. And grade of concrete for all the structural members is M20. And grade of steel is FE 500. All right, uh, so now we'll model this structure in EDAPS. After that, we'll apply the load and we'll analyze and design this structure. Okay, so for that, uh, click on file and click on new model. And if you want to save the changes, just click yes. And over here, use built-in settings with. So these things are already defined. So just click on okay. And after that, just click on okay for now. We can change these things later. All right, so after that, uh, just go to edit and click on edit stories and grid systems or what you can do, just right click over here, click on add modify grids, okay? So story data, click on modify, so story data. So how many stories we have? We got the base. So let me show you in that diagram. A lower portion, this portion, this represents the base, okay? So this is story one and this is story two. So we have to define the base, story one and story two. A base, the elevation of base is zero meters. The story one is at three meters. Uh, right now it happened that uh, the default values are equal to the values that we have used in the example. But sometimes it might not happen. For example, if the floor height is like four meters, then you just have to hit four and hit enter okay so we'll go with three and we got story two at three meters as well and uh we don't need these two stories we'll just right click after selecting and click on delete story and click on delete existing story structure at a story so we got uh so elevation is uh base is at zero so story one is at three meters story two is is at six meters so uh, rest of the things we don't need right now and just click on OK. So after uh, editing the elevation, we have to edit the plan also. So grid systems, we got G1. So we'll just modify this grid system. And over here in the X grid data, so we need uh, this grid. And we also need another grid at uh, 5 meters. 
and we don't need these two grids just delete them in y direction we need uh, one grid at uh, zero another grid at six meters and we don't need these two grids just click on delete okay so uh, bubble size and other things just keep them as they are and just click on ok and just click on ok so right now you can see that it has reduced to a rectangular box okay so 5 meters in the x direction 6 meters in the y direction all right and you can see the 3d view over here first thing after defining the grids you have to define the materials that you are using in your model okay so for that go to define and click on material properties and you got different materials already defined we'll define over here the concrete that we're using and the rebar that we are using okay so click on add new material so you have to select any of these regions okay so uh, in nepal we use indian standards so i'll select india and material type is concrete and standard is indian so and grade of concrete is m20 okay so you click on okay and over here you can see that uh, different values of this material have been uh, provided so if you specifically know any of these values and you can edit them and if you don't know these values just click on ok alright so you can see that m20 material has been defined so after that click on add new material again so you have to add the rebar so over here uh, just click on a material type and here click on rebar so uh, don't get confused with this steel so this steel means that the steel sections for example roll steel sections for example c channels i sections all right so we just need the rebar and we, we need hyst 500 grid okay and click on okay and uh, let us name it with fe 500 and uh, okay so density is uh, density is 78 kilonewton per meter cube right and elasticity is uh, okay and uh, just click on okay all right and after that click on okay all right so after defining the material so we have to define the sections for example we are using beam columns and slabs so we have to uh, define those sections as well so for that again go to define and click on section properties so you don't have to click on section property you just have to hover over there okay and 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 if you click on frame sections so beam and column come under the frame sections right so you have to click on frame sections okay all right so uh, over here uh, don't look at any of these things just click on add new property a section shape is concrete rectangular and you have to select it if it is not selected and just click on concrete rectangular section and you will get a new window over here so we are defining a beam so material we are using m20 so display color uh you can change it if you like and uh okay so uh, depth of the beam is 350 and width of the beam is 230 right 230 after giving the size just click on modify so rebar so over here so design type uh, this is for the column and we click on this option for the beam so longitudinal bars we select fe 500 confinement bars we select fe 500 and our top bars okay so cover to the longitudinal rebar group centroid so we give the cover of 40 mm and bottom bars we give the cover of 40 mm as well so we don't put any value over here and just click on ok and again click on ok Alright, so if you can delete uh, these options if you want, uh, if you just click on delete multiple properties, uh, select select these, select them and click on uh, delete selected and again uh, click here shift, hold shift and select this one and click on sizes. Again, we have to define the columns, so uh, we click on add new property and click on concrete rectangular section over here we name it as column and the material is m20 and uh, over here so uh, column is of 350 by 350 mm so we just give those values and click on modify so rebar 
and uh, longitudinal bars fe 500 confinement bars fe 500 and okay so reinforcement configuration is rectangular so confinement bars are ties so a uh, longitudinal bars clear cover to the confinement bars less 40 mm is fine so number of longitudinal bars along three direction phase means that so along this phase and this phase so three direction phase and two direction phase okay all right so uh, many people just enter some values uh, in these areas but as long as uh, this reinforcement to be design option is checked so it has will not use any of these values okay if you have already designed a column or there is a column that already exists okay and you want to check whether or not the column is safe in that situation what you have to give is that so in that situation you have to give the reinforcement uh, that is available in that column for example if you got 4 16 mm bars and 4 12 mm bars you have to enter that data in these columns and after that you have to click on reinforcement to be checked but right now we are just doing the design so we'll click on reinforcement to be designed uh, so it is a convention uh, okay so number of longitudinal bars along three direction phase is three so it means here and a number of longitudinal bars along two direction phase is five you can see along this is we got five bars so longitudinal bar size uh, let us change it to three as well so longitudinal bar size uh, will go with 12 mm and corner bar size will go with 16 mm just place them it won't give any difference okay and after that uh so confinement bars so we have got of 10 mm so you can change it to 8 mm as well and longitudinal bar is spacing let us go with 100 mm and number of confinement bars 3 3 is fine and click on ok you can see now it's 3 3 right all right so uh, after that just click on ok and click on ok so after defining the frame sections we have to define the slab as well so uh, for that again go to define and click on section properties and click on slab sections so two slab uh, have been defined so we'll just delete them okay and uh, so uh, you have to add and slab so add new property and just click on slab 125 right we'll name it slab 125 so m20 and uh, so a uh, modeling type so we got many options so slab thin slab thick membrane or layer so slab a uh, thin means that it will take some load so slab thick means that it will take huge load for example shear walls okay and membrane means that it won't take any load and all the load that is applied on that slab will be transferred to the beams as we know that 125 mm slab takes some load right it got some shear capacity so we'll go with cell thin all right and uh so property data it's a slab and the thickness is 125 mm so it's not any other slab dropped or ripped slab all right so uh, we'll just click on ok so now we can delete uh, this slab as well because it might confuse you right so just click on ok so now we have done all the definition works so far uh, for modeling so we'll draw our columns uh, slab and the beams all right so you can see that we are at story 2 z is equal to 6 meters so first we'll draw we'll draw the first floor that is the ground floor okay so for that a uh, go to z is equal to 3 meters and we have to draw the columns okay so what you can do is that you can just click on quick draw columns option over here and from here so you have to change the property to column so we are drawing the column and movement release is continuous and we don't need other things to be changed so a uh, left click over here uh, don't leave your click okay so don't leave that mouse button and just drag it like this and after coming over here just release the left mouse button so you can see that you got four columns at the corners okay uh, don't leave your click okay so don't leave that mouse button and just drag it like this and after coming over here just release the left mouse button so you can see that you got four columns at the corners okay so four columns at the corners right so you can see it on the 3d clearly i'll just rotate it right so this is the easiest way to draw the columns so other ways is that you can go to the elevation and you can draw them like you do in sap 2000 but this is very easy 
So why go with the harder method when you already have the easy method, right? After that, we have to draw the beams, right? After that, we have to draw the beam. So for that, uh, for that, you got different methods, right? So uh, just click on this option over here. And what you can do, you can left click here. And after that, left click here. So if you see in the 3D, you can see that you got a beam at this position, right? So other easier method is that just select this beam and delete it. So I'll click on quick draw beams. And from here, so one thing that you have to carefully check is that the property should be what you are drawing, okay? So if you are drawing a beam, the property should be beam. And if you are drawing a column, property should be column. I see many students making this mistake, okay? So they draw uh, columns in the beam positions and they draw beams in the column positions and they mess up the model, right? You should be careful with this thing before drawing, all right? So after that, I'll left click here, drag your mouse and release the left mouse button. So now you can see that you got four beams at all the positions, okay? So this is another easier method, right? <laughs> After drawing uh, the four columns and four beams, so we can draw the slab. So for that, I'll just click on this point over here, quick draw floor slab. So I'll show you uh, another method before that one. So uh, click on this draw rectangular floor. And after that, you have to, you have to make sure that slab 125 has, has been selected and after that left click here drag your mouse and release your left mouse button over here so now you can see that a slab has been a model right so uh, another method is uh, let us delete this slab first and you can just click on a quick draw floor wall and after that uh, select the slab 125 and just left okay so i'll show you side by side so just left click on any of this inside area okay so if you just if you just left click a slab will appear all right after modeling the lower floor now we have to model the upper floor uh, so what you can do is that you can uh, follow the same steps by going in the upper floor right right now we are at the z is equal to three at this floor you can go to the upper floor and repeat the same steps but uh, that is very lengthy process right so we'll just go with the easier one so what we'll do is that we'll go to select click on select and click on select all or what you can do you can just click on this option over here to select everything that we have drawn so far after that what we do we just hit Control plus r okay so uh, or what you can do you can go to edit and click on replicate that is control plus r so what we are doing is that we are just copying this floor in the upper floor because the story height is same this is also three meter uh, high and this is also three meter high right so if the story high is same only then this method will be applied otherwise it will not apply okay uh, we are copying this on the floor wise so we'll click on story and we'll just copy it to story 2 and click on ok so now you can see that you got the second story on the go like a boom right <laughs> okay after modeling our structure we have to apply the loads okay before applying the loads we have to tell it as that what loads we want to apply okay so we'll uh, we'll go to define for uh, telling it apps okay so it apps need to listen to us right okay so uh, for that i uh, go to load patterns and over here over here it the option is dead load right dead load okay so type is dead self weight multiplier is one and it has already been added uh, so self weight multiplier one means that so uh, the dead load that is the dead load of the beam column or the slab so whatever we have defined will be calculated by e tabs itself okay we don't have to give the self weight of this beam or this beam or column by ourselves it will do it by itself all right so uh, next is the live load has also been defined and self weight multiplier is zero so which means that we have to give the live load so live load of what intensity that we want to apply on our structure okay so other types of load that we want to give are uh, okay so uh, let us give the wall load so there self weight multiplier let's keep at zero because we'll give the wall load by ourselves and add new load so next is the parapet load 
click on add new load next one is the uh, partition load partition load so partition you must have seen partitions in your building right so partition may be of any lighter light material or maybe of bricks so click on add new load so floor finish the building might have the tiles or marbles or cement screening floor finish so you have to give that load as well so another is the roof life so roof life and uh, it is the life load and silver multiplier is zero add new load so after doing the dead and life so you have to give the earthquake load as well so eq x that is earthquake load in the x direction so type is a seismic and sulfate multiplier is zero so after that so we have to select the code over here so i'll be using is code okay so is 8093 2002 you can choose any other code that is followed in your country so let's choose it and click on add new load so after that what you have to do you have to modify the later load over here so direction eccentricity so we'll just apply the load in the x direction and if you want to apply add eccentricity you can check uh, these two options as well so the zone factor is per code is 0 0.36 so in the severe zone it's 0 0.36 and site uh, site type that is the soil type so for medium soil it's uh, soil type is 2 okay so importance factor if it is a residential building where there is not much movement of people importance factor is 1 if it is uh, you know a public building then importance factor is 1.5 okay so story range uh, so we are applying from the base to all the stories so response reduction factor is 5 for smrf buildings ductile buildings and for OM, omrf it is 3 okay and time period we'll just leave it leave it to the program and just click on okay and again click apply the load eqy and click on add new load and click on modify later load so we'll uncheck these options and other things are same and just click on ok and again click on ok after defining the loads now we have to apply the loads right so go to the first floor if you are not on it so we'll apply the wall load on all these beams okay let us assuming that uh, this uh, first floor is surrounded by the walls right that is of the brick wall so we'll select these beams over here two three and four okay and go to assign click on frame loads and click on distribute it so the uh, the load that we're applying here is the wall load right and the type uh, load time and direction is forces the direction is gravity so replace existing load yeah okay uh, we are fine with that don't do anything with this portion so just apply the load over here so load of how much so the load of any structure is equal to the unit weight into the volume right the so unit weight of the journal brick is 19.2 2 so if you have any other unit weight of the bricks uh, in your region you just give that value of unit weight so you can get the unit weights from uh, indian standard course if you are following it so is 875 part 1 will give the unit weight of various materials all right and so uh, it helps to calculate the dead load all right so into so uh, the unit over here is kilonewton per meter that is we are calculating the load per meter length so we have to multiply it with the thickness so thickness of the wall is 230 mm that is 0 0.23 uh, times times uh, we have to give the height so height of the wall is so floor height that is 3 meter minus depth of the beam that is 350 0 0.35 right there is this is the height of the wall okay so click on apply so you can see that the wall load of 11.702 kilonewton per meter has been applied so uh, let us assume that uh, this portion over here has got the windows so in that situation we have to consider only the 70 percent of this load and 30 percent is deducted for the openings okay so we'll just do is equal to and we'll just multiply this with 0 0.7 0 0.7 and having a uh, option here replace existing load so it will replace the 11.702 with 8.1914 okay so we'll select this beam over here and click on apply so you can see that 8.191 kilonewton per meter has been applied 
and we just click on ok for now so after applying the load uh load we can see the load in the 3d view so uh, let me just rotate this one okay uh, so let me tell you one thing is that if you want to see the extruded view of this structure uh, just click on this option over here set display options and after that uh, over here special effects just click on uh, just click on extrude frames extrude cells and click on apply and click on okay so you can see the extruded view of this structure okay so now you can see like this is like a real column this is like a real beam and this is like a real slab right so everything is real <laughs> okay uh, let us just uh, go with the, the normal view because we have to see the loads all right and uh, so for seeing the loads go to uh, click on this window and go to display and click on load assigns and click on frame so we want to see what load we want to see the wall load and click on ok now we can see the wall load that has been applied okay so 11.702 kN and over here it's 8.191 kN per meter okay so don't forget that after that what we'll do we'll apply the load on the slab so just select the slab go to assign click on cell loads click on uniform and over here we'll apply many loads so first is the live load that is the live load of two kilometer per meter square will apply okay so you can get the live load values for different kind of buildings uh, you can get from is 875 part 2 or any other code that is followed in your country okay so right now it is just an example of two kilometer per meter square so direction is gravity replace existing load and click on apply so you see that two kilometer per meter square load has been applied and again we'll apply uh, the partition load of one kilometer per meter square okay click on apply okay so we have to select yeah click on apply and uh, next we have to apply the floor finish of one kilometer per meter square click on apply all right so we have applied three loads uh, on this slab right so we don't have to apply any other click on ok and if you uh, left click on this slab and then right click on this loads tab over here you can see different loads that have been applied on this slab uh, load pattern a floor finish of one kilometer per meter square of uniform type has been applied similarly live load of two kilometer per meter square and partition load of one kilometer per meter square all these three loads have been applied okay and just click on okay so you can see that uh, that is equal to three uniform loads gravity and you can see one so if you want to remove this uh, just go to assign and click on clear display of assigns so uh, whatever uh, assignments that you are seeing over here that will they will just go away right so after application of load in the first floor will go with to the upper floor okay so for going to the upper floor you just have to click on this move up in the list okay so for for going in the down floor just click on downward arrow upward arrow okay all right so let's unselect this uh, let's assume that this is the roof of the building okay we'll apply the parapet wall load on these beams uh, so select these beams and after that uh, go to assign click on frame loads click on distributed and we are applying the parapet load right and parapet load off is equal to 19.2 so it's a half brick wall so we'll just go with 0 0.11 meters and uh, the height is up to one meter okay and click on apply and click on okay so if you want to see the parapet wall load just click on uh, display load assigns frame and just from here choose parapet load and click on okay now you can see the parapet load of 2.112 kilonewton has per meter has been applied right so uh, select the uh, select this slab uh, go to assign click on cell loads click on uniform so what we are applying over here we are applying the roof live load roof live load off so let's assume that this roof is accessible and if the uh, roof is accessible uh, in intensity of load is 1.5 km per meter square and if it is not accessible then it's 0.75 km per meter square load should be applied okay direction is gravity click on apply 
so other loads uh we just uh, so we don't have any partition on the roof so let us just go with the floor finish okay click on one click on apply okay so nothing has been selected click on apply and click on okay so we have finally applied the loads uh, so you can see that we got hinge support at the base we have to convert this support to the fixed support okay so uh, let's just go to the base and uh, left click at this point drag your mouse and release your left mouse button left mouse button so that all these joints are selected go to assign click on joint click on restraints and select this fixed support click on apply click on okay okay so now the fixed support has been applied you can see with this plus sign over here all right uh, after the application of the load we have to define the mass source all right for that go to define and click on mass source that is over here so why we need mass source while applying the seismic load on the building so uh the ETAS will calculate the base shear okay so to calculate the base shear we need the total weight of the building so in order to calculate the total weight of the building so this mass source option is required okay so uh, we'll just edit this mass source over here so modify so mass source we can change the name over here and here uh, uncheck these two options and click on specified load patterns and click on dead click on a multiplier click on one so it means that all the dead load will be added while calculating the total mass of the building and click on live if you see is 8093 part 1 2002 and table 8 so uh, you can see that if the intensity of the live load is up to and including 3 km per meter square that is uh, less than or equal to 3 km per meter square in that case only 25 percent of the imposed load is considered while calculating the seismic weight of the building all right so if it, if the live load intensity is more than three kilometer per meter square then 50 percent of the load is considered okay so we have to tell it as this thing so for which mass source is required we gave the live load of two kilometer per meter square so we'll just give the factor of 0 0.25 and click on add so next is wall load so we'll give the factor of one that is all the wall load will be added parapet load one is fine partition one is fine so floor finish is one so roof light so what happens is that when there is earthquake we assume that the people are not on the roof that is just an assumption okay some people might not do okay so they might just prefer to stay there or just take selfies or you know take videos so that they can post on social media or anywhere right okay so it depends right also uh, so the multiplier is zero so click on add and uh, we don't add uh, earthquake loads so after that just click on okay and uh, and click on okay so we have defined the mass source so after defining the mass source we have to miss the structure we know that it has uses the finite element method for calculation so in order for that method to work we have to divide the slab into a number of smaller elements okay if we don't divide the slab into a smaller elements so in that case whatever the load has been applied on this slab it will directly uh, get transferred to the columns not to the beams so in that situations the reinforcement of the beams will be very much low but the columns will eventually fail in your software for that just select this slab over here at z is equal to three also you just select the slab okay so here we got only two slabs right suppose that you got 100 slabs selecting each slab by going in each floor is not very handy so in that situation what you have to do is that just go to select click on select so don't click just over over there and click on properties and click on slab sections so select the slab 125 and click on select so now this slab over here has been selected that you can see from here okay all right and after that uh, just go to assign click on cell don't click again all right <laughs> i just say click but don't click okay after that click on floor auto mesh options you can keep it to default or uh, you can just tell it has mesh objects into so let's go with 10 by 10 elements okay so you'll see this thing in a while uh, after we run this structure okay all right and just click on uh 
okay so mesh 10 by 10 has been done on this floor and if you go to the upper floor here also all right after doing the meshing uh, some people prefer to define the diaphragm so we only need to define the diaphragm if we are applying the earthquake load at the center of mass so we are not doing this because we have defined the course for applying the earthquake loads so after doing these many things we have to define the load combinations all right so uh, for that uh, so before that just go to design and click on concrete frame design and click on view revised preferences so here design code is 456 2000 has already been selected so we are okay with that just click on okay now let us define the load combinations so go to define and click on load combinations over here and click on click on add default design combos so for uh, what we are doing concrete frame design check it and click on ok so we got 14 design combinations right so as per is uh, 456 2000 we got 13 load combinations right so why we need load combinations because so we have defined so many loads in our load patterns right uh, those loads are not applied as single loads right so you don't apply only the live load or the dead load right so these loads are applied in combination with each other okay so uh, we don't need unicorn one but uh, let us keep it it won't uh, make any trouble all right so unicorn two if you select it and click on modify so combo over here you can see that load combination is decon two okay so combination type is linear add and uh over here you can see that with all the dead load and the live load so scale factor of 1.5 has been used so it means that this load combination is 1.5 dead load plus live load okay uh, if you want to edit these load combinations so while adding a uh, default design combos so for example uh, concrete frame design so uh, you have to check this option convert to user combinations or editable okay so in that situation you can just edit the edit the scale factor and also you can edit their name okay so if you go to udigon 3 and click on modify so combo so you can see that over here 1.2 scale factor has been used with the earthquake load and the live load and the dead load right so this is 1.2 dead load plus live load plus earthquake load right similarly we got other load combinations for example 1.2 times dead load plus live load minus earthquake load so minus earthquake load means the earthquake load in the opposite direction so we just click on ok over here so now what we do is that we just run our model okay so for that go to analyze and click on first check model and select all these options over here we are checking for everything sell overlaps and click on ok so model has been checked no warning messages were generated so we are fine with our model after that go to analyze and click on run analysis so let's save it uh, it as uh, a structure right okay so you can see the deformed shape of the building in this window over here right so uh, if you want to see the deformed shape here as well just click on this window and go to display and click on deformed shape and for which load combination you want so i want to for load combination 2 and click on ok so uh, earlier we had done mesh of this slab uh, into a 10 by 10 elements so you can see that 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 elements in the x direction that is in the 2 direction and also in the 3 direction 10 elements have been created okay so this is what missing is all right so if you click on this window 3d view and click on start animation so it will animate okay you can see the supports are fixed over here all right let's stop the animation so after running the analysis so we have to design our structure okay so for designing our structure click on design and click on concrete frame design so first you have to check view revise preferences so if you want to do any changes and uh so select design combinations so we have all the design combinations selected over here just click on ok so go to design again concrete frame design and click on start design check okay so uh 
uh, let me show you on this elevation click on elevation and let's just go to the a elevation and over here right so we'll again go to design and click on concrete frame design and if you click on display design info so longitudinal reinforcing click on ok now you can see the reverse on this window as well okay so it means that uh, so these value over here represent the area of reinforcement that is required at this position for example this is the beam right so the top reinforcement required is 555 mm square bottom is 278 so here at the mid it's 139 bottom is 308 mm square so now what you have to do is you have to convert this value into the number of reverse all right after designing so you have to check if any of your structural member has failed so you can see that uh, this beam is uh, red in color so chances are that uh, this beam has failed so just go to uh, design and click on concrete frame design and click on uh, verify all members passed you can see that four concrete frames failed the design check so uh, i think these four members have failed so here uh, the beams of a single floor fail so sometimes what might happen is that if your restructure is very huge in that situation beams or columns at different locations might fail so what uh, you have to do you just select them okay so i have selected the beam so uh, now we'll just modify the size of these beams okay before that just assign these uh, beams to a group so that uh, we can know which beams have failed right so for that go to assign and click on assign objects to group and click on add group so uh, the name is group one so we'll just name it as fairly failed bams beams okay not beam beams and we just uh, click on ok so these members have been assigned to the groups if you want to see why that beam failed uh, again click on design click on concrete frame design and click on display design info and click on ok so if you left click on this beam and right click over here just click on summary so you can get the summary sheet of your beam design okay so uh, the label is story 1 beam id is b2 and unique name is six and a uh, beam id is beam okay so combo combination is uh, decon 10 and uh, okay so length and other things section properties so uh, b uh, breadth is 230 depth is 350 and other things okay so just go to the bottom over here you can see that shear stress due to shear force and torsion together exceeds the maximum allowed so it means that our beam has failed in shear so it is not able to carry all the shear force that due to the load okay so what now we'll do is that we'll increase the size of this beam okay so for that just unlock this model and click on okay okay so we have selected this beam just unselect it and go to define and click on section properties click on frame sections we'll create a new beam of the increased size so click on beam and click on add copy of property so we'll just name it as beam modified right so material is m20 so the depth of the beam uh, let's keep as 500 and width let's change it to 350 and click on ok you don't have to change other things okay click on ok so now select all these four beams that have failed so for that go to select click on select and click on groups and click on fail beams and click on select you can see that these four beams have been selected and after that go to assign click on frame click on section property and let us assign them being modified and click on ok so now you can see that this beam is the modified beam that is it is of the section 350 by 500 and this is of the section 230 by 350 okay after doing this thing uh, again uh, run the analysis so just click on this option over here okay so you can see a deformed shape in this uh, window if you want to see the deformed shape in this window just click here and click on display click on deformed shape and just select any load combination and click on ok so you can see the deformed shape and if you want to see the shear force and movement diagram just click on this this option and for which uh, for which combination you want to see the shear force and bending movement diagram just select it and so movement n33 so let us see shear 22 and click on ok 
you can see the shear force over right and uh if you want to see the movement diagram just click on movement m33 and click on ok this is the movement diagram all right so if you want to see in the 3d view just select it so first select the window after that select this and click on ok so you can see the movement diagram in the 3d view right if you want to just get rid of these diagrams go to assign click on clear display of assigns right okay so if you want to see the value of any beam just uh, left click here and right click you will get this window again and you can see whatever you want to see on this window after doing this uh, again let us design it and click on concrete frame design and click on start design check so nice and easy now you can see that uh, the color is black so this is probably safe right again go to design and click on concrete frame design and click on verify all members passed so all concrete frame members have passed the design check all right so uh, this is the simple introduction of e tabs so if you are a true designer then you have to design your building by looking the autocad drawings right so you have to see all those plans sections elevations okay so if you want to learn the design uh, design of a residential building then there is another course on my profile you can see that so unlike other courses that just tell you the tools of this e tabs that course will provide you for all those steps that are required to model analyze and design a residential building all right guys so this much for this video hope this video was helpful thank you for watching and take